The U.S. Missile Defense Agency, or MDA, has selected Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, and Raytheon to research and develop a new missile system. The companies were awarded separate contracts with a total value of around $60 million to develop and test the first interceptor that can take out incoming hypersonic weapons in flight. Known as Glide Phase Interceptor or GPI, the hypersonic weapons system will be capable of defeating a new generation of hypersonic weapons. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how the U.S. military is planning to counter the hypersonic threats. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air, and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder has been kind enough to offer all Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. An object is said to be hypersonic once they exceed the speed of Mach 5. That's five times the speed of sound. This is about 1,715 meters per second or 3,836 miles per hour or 6,174 kilometers per hour. There are currently three methods being applied to make hypersonic weapons. The first is using a scramjet engine. The scramjet is an innovation on the ramjet. Ramjet engines can power flight to supersonic speeds, but scramjet can enable the missiles to reach hypersonic speeds. These engines have no moving parts, like the compressors and turbines used in the turbofan engines found on conventional jet planes. They rely on the huge pressures created by fast airflow into the engine to ignite the fuel and generate thrust. The second is using hypersonic glide vehicle HGV. In this method, the system is launched to extremely high altitudes using a rocket booster where it skips across the Earth's upper atmosphere. The vehicle then separates from the carrier and glides back to the Earth towards its intended target, attaining hypersonic speed. The third is through the use of ALBM, or Air Launched Ballistic Missile. As the name suggests, this kind of missile is ballistic in nature but is launched from the air, unlike traditional ballistic missiles which are launched from land or sea-based platforms. Hypersonic weapons combine the high speed of a traditional ballistic missile with the maneuverability of a cruise missile, making them almost unstoppable. Hypersonic weapons are currently being pursued mainly by America, Russia, China, France, and India. Russia is at the forefront of hypersonic weapons when it comes to operational deployment. It's reached an advanced level with two hypersonic weapons, Kinzhal and Avangard. The Kinzhal or Dagger is an ALBM or Air Launched Ballistic Missile. According to the Russian president, units in the country's southern military district, which borders Ukraine and the Black Sea, have deployed the missiles operationally. Avangard is a nuclear-tipped hypersonic boost glide vehicle. Earlier this year, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu stated that the first missile unit equipped with the Avangard had entered combat duty. China has developed DF-17 missile along with DF-ZF 
hypersonic glide vehicle. TF-17 or Dongfeng-17 is a Chinese solid-fueled, road-mobile, medium-range ballistic missile that mounts the DF-ZF hypersonic glide vehicle. The DF-17 and DF-ZF was officially unveiled at the National Day Military Parade on the 1st of October 2019. It came to light recently that in July this year, China tested a nuclear-capable hypersonic glide vehicle that went around the globe before it sped towards a target, a demonstration that's caught the U.S. intelligence off guard. GPI will intercept hypersonic weapons in the glide phase of flight, which occurs once a missile has re-entered Earth's atmosphere and is maneuvering towards its target. The initial development phase will focus on reducing technical risk, rapidly developing technology, and demonstrating the ability to intercept a hypersonic threat. GPI will be fired from the standard Mark 41 vertical launch system and integrated with the modified Baseline 9 Aegis weapon system that detects, tracks, controls, and engages hypersonic threats. So, Arleigh Burke class of guided missile destroyers, DDGs, which are built around the Aegis combat system, and equipped with Mark 41 VLS would be able to launch the GPI. Aegis Ashore, which is the ground-based variant, will also be able to fire the GPI. Vice Admiral John Hill, MDA Director, said the agency decided it would make the most sense to focus on taking out hypersonic weapons in the glide phase of flight, where they are most vulnerable. He stated that the agency will first focus on providing a capability to the Navy. If this is successful, we can move it to the land-based battery to protect other things against that sort of hypersonic threat. Rear Admiral Tom Druggan, MDA's sea-based weapons systems program executive, said in the statement, we are pleased to have these contractors working with us to develop design concepts for the GPI. He added, multiple awards allow us to execute a risk reduction phase to explore industry concepts and maximize the benefits of a competitive environment to demonstrate the most effective and reliable glide phase interceptor for regional hypersonic defense as soon as possible. It's to be noted all three companies have experience in hypersonic weapons development. Both Lockheed Martin and Raytheon are also competitively working on scramjet-powered hypersonic missiles as part of the hypersonic air-breathing weapon concept, Hawk program, run by the U.S. Air Force and DARPA. Northrop Grumman designed the motor for both weapons. Lockheed is also developing the Air Force's hypersonic AGM-183A air-launched rapid response weapon. So expertise is present, and with the help of MDA's guidance, things should work out. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.